Hi, and welcome to the Barefoot Deacon series. Today, I thought I would start to answer some of the questions I hear, especially the ones that are asked repeatedly by several different people. After all, if one person is wondering about something, the chances are pretty good that other people might be wondering the same thing. So I wanted to start addressing some of these questions, starting with this one. What is the significance of the number 40 in the Bible? This might be the start of a series of videos about numbers in the Bible, but we'll start with 40, which, as you may or may not already know, repeats many times in the Bible. So off the top of my head, I can remember that during the flood, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years before he led the Israelites out of slavery, and they wandered in the desert for 40 years after the exodus. Jesus fasted in the wilderness for 40 days before being tempted by Satan, and Jesus ascended into heaven 40 days after the resurrection. But there's more, which I will get to shortly. And the number 40 even holds up outside of the biblical text. For example, Jesus predicted the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple, and the Roman Empire destroyed everything exactly 40 years after the crucifixion of Jesus. And the Protestant Bible itself was written by 40 different authors. 32 wrote the Old Testament and eight writers of the New Testament. But what does all that mean? What's the significance of the number 40? Here's what my Old, Pre Old Testament professor had to say about this in seminary. She said, there is definitely a spiritual significance to the number 40. And here's what it means theologically. So write this down. The number 40 symbolizes a really long time. That wasn't exactly helpful, but I really did enjoy her sense of humor. And she also taught me to look at similar texts together. So for example, if we take all these examples of the number 40 in the Bible, we find similarities between the passages. When we take a step back and we take a broader view of the biblical narrative, we see that many of these biblical stories are about a time of preparation and purification, which is why fasting is often, often involved. Some examples of this are Jesus fasting before the temptation and the subsequent launch of his ministry. Elijah fasted for 40 days on Mount Horeb and then met God and got instructions for his next mission. Other stories have a common theme of teaching and instruction such as Jesus talking with the disciples after his resurrection for 40 days prior to his ascension, or Jonah prophesying to the people of Nineveh for 40 days, or Moses leading and instructing the people of Israel for 40 years after the exodus from slavery. When I look at these biblical texts side by side in this way, the themes start to emerge. So when I saw this pattern, I asked myself, Am I in a period of preparation and purification, such as Jesus before the temptation or Elijah on Mount Horeb? Or am I in a period of teaching and leading, like Jesus before his ascension or Jonah in Nineveh? Or am I needing a balance of both? What emerged from my own life is that periods of purification and preparation, like Sabbath days and Sabbath time, where I'm still learning and listening, actually feeds and informs the periods where I'm teaching and leading. We all need both. Americans have been led to believe that we need to always be producing, creating, leading, doing. But a healthy balance includes similar periods of rest and rejuvenation, of listening and learning. See what wonderful things can happen when you take a broader approach to scripture? All we did is look at these biblical texts with the common number 40 and watch as common themes rose to the top. This is part of the reason that we warn against using the Bible too literally or focusing on just one or two verses out of context. While I still wrestle with certain passages in the Bible for their violence and their fear-based thinking, the Bible is a pretty accurate description of the human world as it was then and as it still is today. The Bible really comes alive for me in its metaphorical language and overarching themes of love and light. From this bird's eye view, the Bible becomes a roadmap.
So where are you on the map? Have you been wandering and wondering in the wilderness, alone and lost, maybe for 40 days or 40 years? Are you currently in a period of purification and preparation? If so, stay there until the work is done. Because at the end of that period, it'll be time for you to start your mission, whatever that might be. Or are you at the end of a purification time and ready to start your mission? Maybe you've been doing your mission for so long that it's time to take a break or retire or go back to the wilderness for some fresh inspiration to continue down the road. After all, that's what sabbatical periods are for and why God thought so highly of them as to make them part of the top 10 list of instructions for how to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength and mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, leave me a message in the comments. Maybe I'll address your question in an upcoming episode of The Barefoot Deacon, or I might answer it directly. After all, if you're thinking of a question, others might be thinking it too. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time.